Hello and welcome to this Game Pit Pit Stop for The War of the Worlds, a game designed by Arno de Acera and published by DBG. The War of the Worlds comes in various settings. This happens to be the one set in Britain, but they all follow the same pattern in that it's a solo game and you're playing the human forces attempted to fight back against the Martian forces which have invaded at the beginning of the 20th century. The Martians will come in waves and in cylinders, and when the waves are active, they'll move around attempting to devastate your area, where you'll be fighting back, creating forces, and attempting to stop the tripods over the course of their five waves. Each round of the game is played over several phases. To start with, you've got the production phase, in which the areas that have not been completely devastated for the humans are going to generate production points for them. And from those production points, you're going to be able to build your forces. You can build infantry to move around and sabotage things and to help build defences for your guns. Your guns are the only things that can defeat the tripods in open battle. You've got cavalry that will give you some intelligence to make your guns more effective. You can also build these harbours which you're going to need in order to get your refugees to safety which will score you points and prevent the Martians from grabbing them and scoring them points. And you can move your units around the board. And you might want to move your units because the next phase we go to is the battle phase. If during the battle phase there's ever an active wave in the same area as any human units, then they're going to go to war. And you go to war on this battle map over here. You bring the human units in, you can place the guns in any gun row, and the humans will support them. And then the tripods will come across as well. The humans you have can support your guns. For example, these infantry can build earthworks to keep your guns remain hidden until you've decided to shoot them. And cavalry will let you get special tokens such as surprise shots, which will double your first shot, or explosive shell, which will do more damage. And there'll be one off assistances to you. But then all your humans will sit and wait, waiting to see whether you're successful in the battle. For the Martian deployment, their deployment is decided by an AI card, which will tell you which space they start on. And then for each round of the battle, you'll flip another AI, and according to the color, and they come in five colors, these tripods, and they're randomized when they join the waves, that will tell them what they're gonna do. And it might be a case of them simply moving in certain directions. They might fire at anything that's around, or they might try and detect. Because your guns, as long as they've got earthworks behind them, are undetected until you decide to shoot. When either side is shooting, it depends how far away you are. If you're next to each other, you've got a one in two chance of hitting. If you're as far away as three, which is the maximum range, you've only got a one in six chance of hitting. The battle will continue then until either all of your units have been destroyed and the Martians will capture humans and score points, or all the tripods are destroyed and you've destroyed that wave. If you ever destroy all five waves of the Martians, then that is one way in which you're going to achieve victory. The next phase will be the devastation phase. Any waves which are still active on the board at that stage are then going to roll a die. And depending upon how many tripods are in that wave, they're going to have certain actions that they take part in on the board. For example, if they're in a zone that produces, they might reduce that production, and then that's going to generate refugees, which they're going to look to capture, and you're going to look to rescue. The other things they might do is just destroy your units, which are on the board, and take them out of play. Or they might just straight up attack your VPs that you've been scoring. Once we move on from the devastation phase, we get to the human action phase, and that's when you can start using your infantry around the board. Now, your infantry can do a couple of things. When the Martians first appear, they appear in a cylinder, and these are dormant, and these tripods are being prepared by this activation machine here. And while they're dormant, you can directly attack them, and you roll a die, and there's a chance you might kill them, there's a chance you might damage them, and a chance that the infantry themselves might get lost. You can't directly attack tripods, only guns can do that, as we've seen, but you can lay powder keg traps on the main roads, and as waves move in there, there's a chance that there's gonna do damage to those waves. Following that, we move on to the escape phase. During the escape phase, any of these refugees that are on the board, you can move them one space, and then you're attempting to get them out of this harbour that you've built during the production phase. When they're next to a harbour, again, you're going to roll dice, and there's a chance that they're going to attempt to escape. If any refugees do say that they are escaping, you're then again going to roll dice, and you're going to see whether the Martians have followed them. Now, there's a chance that they won't, and you'll get lucky. However, there's also a chance that they do. And then we go into the second type of battle, and that's a naval battle. When we're in a naval battle, each refugee is represented by a freighter. You've got a chance to spend some of your production points in order to get warships to help you out. And then the Martians are going to appear, these times they're naval Martians, and they've got their own deck of AI cards. And they're going to appear, again, in slightly randomised spots on the board. 
And from there, their actions again are gonna be AI driven. And they're gonna be looking to shoot or move in on these freighters and capture the refugees. If they capture refugees, they score points. While the human player is attempting to move these freighters down the board as fast as they can, using the warships to attempt to attack and put off the Martians. And if ever you get a freighter all the way to the bottom, then it's achieved safety and you score points for rescuing those refugees. Next phase we've got is the Martian action phase. And it depends where these waves are and what actions they're gonna take. They might be in red weed or devastated zones, or they can be in healthier zones or less healthy zones, or they can get to your capital. Now, one of the most likely things they're gonna do, and again, they roll a dice, but it's weighted what they're gonna do and where they are, is they might move. And wherever they are, in general, their movement is gonna lead them down towards your capital. They might also repair any damage that they've got to any tripod, or they might bring in a new arrival. When they move, as I say, they're moving towards the capital. And the reason this is most important is that's the second way you can lose the game, is that if ever they completely conquer your capital, that is an instant loss. Also, and the last action they can do, and it's much more likely to happen in the capital, is they might start adding to their flying machine. And they only have to get four parts of the flying machine together. And that is also an instant victory for those Martians. The last thing we get to is the assembly phase. And I said that they come in dormant cylinders with activations. And again, it's a dice roll. And if you roll the color of the activation machine, that then becomes an active wave. And that will start moving along the place and causing you more problems and devastation and getting towards your capital and causing you all of these issues. So how are the humans gonna win? They're gonna win by destroying all five waves or each turn in all these production areas, that's gonna score them points. Every 10 points equals a germ point. And if you ever get all the way up to 10 germ points, in effect, 100 victory points, you've won the game. When you get to germ points three, six, and nine, that's when more cylinders are gonna come into play and you have more and more problems facing you. The Martians are gonna win by building their flying machine, completely devastating your capital, whatever it might be, in this case, it's London, or they push up their colonization points by devastating places with red weed or devastation tokens, which will flip to red weed as things get worse, or by capturing all those humans which you're having either in battles or refugees on the board. The last thing to note is there's a huge stack of event cards and they are linked to every phase in the game. And if the top card of the deck is linked to the current phase, then you're gonna flip it over and see what happens. And they have a wide variety of effects. Like this case, you might be able to boost your workforce back up to prevent an area from getting conquered so easily. In a battle, they might move quicker than we expected. During the devastation, they might all just pump out some black smoke and cause you problems. In the human action phase, you might get some of these special characters come into play, like the narrator's wife. She'll appear, and if you can get her off, she'll score you bonus points rather than just the one point for any other refugee. Or those refugees might start looting during the escape phase and refuse to escape and actually cause you more problems. The Martian actions might get worse. And of course, during the assembly phase, things can happen. And you can have more activation machines turn up, which will make it more likely for those cylinders to become waves, which will attack you, which you're looking to fight off. Both sides vying for victory in War of the Worlds. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, check out the Game Pit channel on YouTube. And for more in-depth coverage of gaming, please find the Game Pit Podcast. Thank you.